All right, welcome everybody. So I'm trying a new setup. I changed the uh, basement around completely. Have to shoot down here because of the ceiling height. Let's get started. I want to see if I like this mic. If I don't, I'll go back to the lab. But right now, I wanted to talk about kind of what has happened to my channel. My channel is just derailing itself. I don't even like coming on my own channel anymore. I really don't even respond to comments anymore. And it's got to, it's got to change or it's got to go. Like one of the two has to happen. It's either got to change or it's got to go. I don't know which is going to happen. And it has turned into ever since I made videos about the keto and carnivore people, those people are coming on here and attacking me. And here's the thing. Like, I'm not some super vegan out there going to be throwing uh, blood on everybody or, or who is going to be, you know, protesting. I like, I liked eating meat. I, I had no problem with it. My body couldn't handle it anymore. And I, I, I got an approach by this guy, Arnold, over at Arnold's Way. And he came up to me, and this is when I was over 400 pounds. He's like, you're fat. And I said, I know. And he's like, I can help you. And I'm like, okay. And he was doing this this vegan thing, and I told him, I said, look, I eat a ton of meat. Like, I, I, I grew up in this, this whole thing, because I grew up, my dad worked at a food distribution plant. My dad got me into the food distribution plant. I worked from the age of 13 until 21 in a food distribution plant where it was 95% animal related because we did mostly fish. That was what we were known for at this particular place. And then beef, chicken. That was probably it, actually. I don't think we, well, we did pork, a little bit of pork. And so I grew up in this. It's not like I can't throw shade to that because my parents still eat that way my kidneys and liver shut down from the amount that i ate i loved eating it and so i went vegan now i i probably shouldn't even call myself vegan i'm more plant-based i'm like that mcdougall used to say you know like i'm not really vegan because vegans you know oreos are vegan and you know so i'm kind of along those lines now i don't eat meat i still haven't eaten meat since i started going vegan or since i went vegan and it's just a thing but I, I'm not, I wasn't out here attacking everybody. I was telling people what happened to me. Now, the, it, it's crazy how polar it makes people, it, either any side of the camp that you're on. If you are a vegan lover, then you will like hate everybody else. If you're a carnivore person, then you hate the other two. If you're keto, you hate everybody. If uh, Is paleo still a thing? Paleo was the weirdest one. It was all talking about like getting like uh stuff from the nature but it was all in jars and tubs and stuff like that that like that's not real so i i don't know what that one was and honestly this really was just kind of a uh a, a, a channel that really was just about my life and everything and now it's turned into let's give ryan advice like I, I, i'm not looking for it like i you know I, i'm not like i have done a lot of things i i've tried to talk about a lot of it on this channel i have done a lot of things and when somebody mentioned the other day and one my last video i think that i made that i have ocd could be but when i started comparing ocd and high cortisol they are very similar they're almost indistinguishable between the two of them so i got to thinking when i worked at the sealant place we made caulking it's some people don't know what that is it's look it up i worked at the sealant place and i worked with this guy kid we we're both kids and he didn't have a car and i did and so I would go pick him up and half of the time he'd be running out of the house, like eating dinner because his dad was having an OCD episode or something like that about like the silverware not being in the right spot or something not being in the right spot. And he's like, I can't live at this place anymore. And the reason he didn't have a car was because he was saving up so he could figure out how to get out of his living situation. And we had like a 15 or 20 minute drive to get to the, to the job. So we would talk and one of the things that I, I started remembering after the, the person said something on my channel was his dad was a prisoner of war. His dad was a prisoner of war and his dad was starved. And his dad still to this to the day, even though it was, this was in, I think he was uh, Korean War. He was either in, no, he might've been in Vietnam. I think it was in Vietnam. And his dad was starved as a POW prisoner of war and because of this he still didn't like eating because he still went through the torture of the food and everything like that so that probably gave him really high cortisol i have really high cortisol i can barely even get myself to take i mean i do everything around the house because i'm the only one here so i have to everything gets done 
But I had to fight with myself and certain things on getting things done because my brain thinks everything is fight or flight. It's like my cortisol is always through the roof because cortisol is your fight or flight response. I don't know. And then I started thinking about the Minnesota starvation experiment and how these people started becoming obsessed. One of the guy would start steal cookbooks and stare at the food or the other guy uh, was obsessed with his urine or uh, one uh, another one was obsessed with walking even though he didn't have enough energy left. These people became obsessed with certain things. They had to do this and they had to do the exact amount. And I've been that way. That was actually why I quit weightlifting because I became so over obsessed with it it ruined my life i wouldn't even have sex because i'm like no it's gonna screw up my gains and my girlfriend at the time was like bro like what and i'm like yeah no no i can't it's gonna screw up like i've got squats tomorrow like a you know humping is gonna screw up like that i might not recover right and you know you you shoot things out and and you know and, and uh that might lower my testosterone and Sorry, I just can't. I can't. I got this lift tomorrow. And uh, and she's like, are you competing for the, like, the Olympics or something like that? I'm like, no, no, I just got, I got this notebook here. I got this stuff written down and I got, you know, I got to make this lift. And, uh, and when I look back at my damn life over this shit, I'm like, what were you thinking? <laughs> what were you thinking? I, I still cannot almost forgive myself i'm you know it's probably better every in hindsight everything's probably better but there was this girl erica she came over my house one time and this is this is this was heavy in my lifting days this was 19 years old somewhere in there i was real heavy into lifting all that mattered was going to work and going to the gym that's it I had this girl come over my house and she's like i've never been more horny in my life i need you to help me out i said no 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 sorry i'd love to I'd love to, but like my gains are really good right now. <laughs> like my lifting is on point. Sorry. Gonna have to go find somebody else. And I like, I'm like, what the fuck? But I guarantee, cause this is right. This was right before I started doing keto. Cause I was <clears throat> trying to get an edge up, up on trying to get more protein in, trying to get some fat off and everything like that. And this was right before that. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? I had this happen to me. I don't even want to admit. It was more than once. Um, I had this happen to me a few times, right? And then it, it's just, it's ridiculous. And then so, and then I started thinking about this stuff and I, all of this is combining to the previous video that I made about had to kick everybody out of my house because I just could not take it anymore. They were driving me crazy and it just, it had to be done. And it just, and now I'm like, because I'm living by myself, I'm thinking about all of this crazy shit that I have done over the years in the name of being in a, a body that I agree with, which has never happened. I have never gotten there. And so I have avoided life in the name of getting to a better body. Meanwhile, most of the women who have come after me have come after me because I'm in a bigger body and they like that. And I have turned down all of these. It's not just sex opportunities or relationship opportunities that I've turned down. I have turned down jobs because it would get in the way of certain things. I have turned down so much. I haven't gone to parties because it would get in the middle. I remember one time I got invited to this dinner thing, but I had just eaten and I didn't want to screw up my eating schedule on my weightlifting thing. I don't know what this is. I don't, I was told to make a video. You ever get that little voice in your head or your heart or whatever. And it's like, make this video. Just, I'll give you the words, just say the words and just publish it. Uh, so maybe this is, maybe this is helping somebody out there. Maybe somebody watching this, I was outside and I was getting eaten alive. So I came back in it's like, go make this video. I turned down so many things in my life in the name of getting, I remember I was at my friend's birthday party and I was dieting and I didn't have a piece of, piece of birthday cake. I was not happy with my body image the day afterwards, but I was, I still remember not having that damn cake to, to this day. Um, his mother was looking at me like, what is wrong with you? You're not even overweight at that time. I wasn't even overweight. So if you are watching this, 
If you are watching this, just live your fucking life. You are at some point going to be so skinny you couldn't even believe it. You know why? Because you're going to be dead and you're going to be a skeleton. You'll be the best weight you've ever been in your life. But what did you do in the meantime? What did you do? This body image too will stop you from dating the people that you want to date. It will stop you from doing the things you want to do. It will stop you from having a good image about yourself. It will stop you from enjoying your life. What was it all for? You are only, you, nobody can take anything out of this plan. If you, if you know anything about video game design, I'm going to school you a little bit. In video game design, I talked about this in previous videos. I went to school for video game design. In video game design, and I think I'm running out of time, damn it. You have this engine. A lot of people have heard of Unreal Engine. I think it's Unreal Engine 5 now. You have this world that you create. It's a world, it's fleshed out now. It looks almost identical to the world we live in because the graphics are so high fidelity now. It looks almost identical to the world we live in these days. I might have to clear that, really sucks. It looks identical to the world we live in. You build assets, you build cars, whatever you want to create. If you want to create something in 1925 New York City, you can create that. And then you go into this world and you have a spawn point or whatever, however you get into this world. But when you leave in this game, you can't take anything with you. It is no different. But then you can spawn back in. Maybe that's reincarnation. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's all the same. When you leave... When you leave, whether that's a video game world or when it's the world that we're in, you can't take anything with you other than the memories you created. And do you want those memories to be of everything you did in a better body image? And I am not telling people to be 500 pounds. Don't fat and shame me because I think that's bullshit too. You should not be 500 pounds. I was 422. It was fucking miserable. I will never do it again. But if you are in a moderately comfortable weight, which I guess I am right now, 260 pounds, I can get around fine. Would you rather have memories that you create for yourself or would you rather be doing that extra rep or whatever it is that doesn't fucking matter at all, right? You, you just missed somebody's party so you could get in an extra rep and people brag about this shit. They'll make commercials about this shit. Nobody is better off getting an extra rep in other uh, over going to something that you are might remember the rest of your life you are not going to remember that workout most likely and it's like unless it's like a pr or something like that you're not going to remember it or you could have just done it at a different time of the day or jo join a 24-hour gym and do it later get those carbs in eat. <laughs> and <laughs> and you'll be, and you'll probably lift better don't make your entire life about your body image, it's crazy. This social media life is crazy. It's crazy. I can't stand it. And now we've got people who won't even like, and here's another thing that's like, you, people won't even date because they think they're ugly or something like that because of what they see on the fucking social media. It's, it's, it's crazy. I like, I re, I'm reliving my life and I'm like, where am I? Where am I? I, my, I spent my entire 44 years on this planet so far chasing an image that i've not gotten to because if you're chasing something it just always means that you don't have it chasing something i'm gonna have to i'll be back <sighs> sorry my memory card was full instead of ch it, this 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 has been so much revelation like yesterday i didn't i didn't want to do anything and i I've been blessed. I don't have to, right? So I was upstairs and I'm writing this stuff down and I'm reflecting again because I'm just trying to figure out how I end up at 44. Yes, I've been blessed. I have a house over my head. I'm fine, right? But it's just what what was it all for? What was chasing this body image for? What did it get me? I made a channel about it even. And if you've made it this far into this video and it's all you think about 
is your body image. It's fine. It's a good thing to work on yourself and become the best version of yourself. But if it takes over your entire life, if people stop inviting you to things, either, either A, because it's a pain in the ass to feed you and I don't feel like doing it, or B, because you're not gonna show up anyways because X, or whatever it is. And maybe that's fine with you. Maybe, maybe you don't care about that. Maybe, maybe that's fine to you, right? But like, if I'm reflecting on my previous self, and maybe this happened for a reason, maybe it did, okay? I'm just venting, this is my channel. I made this channel just to kind of vent about life. Not even vent, just to talk about life. Cause I like to talk and I like to make, I like to entertain people and make people laugh. And I'm in this house by myself. If you've made your entire life around your body image, and your, the girl actually, it wasn't just some random girl that came over my house that day. It was somebody that I wanted to date since I had moved to the city that I was in. And I didn't even tell her. I didn't even need to. It wasn't even a chase. She chased me. I still, I never forget the day she was on, a, on, my, on my bed. And I said, no. And I'm like, <clears throat> why? For some reps that I don't even remember what they were. I'm sure I got the, I, I, but I got the notebook over there. I'm sure. Because I can't throw those out. I have actually started throwing some of them out. This is not a therapy session. This is really listen to what I've gone through. Really listen to it. If you're not 44, if you're 20 something watching this and you're trying to decide between McDougal who's dead or Pritikin who's dead or all these other dead people who have these <laughs> fucking diets for you to try or you're, you're weightlifting and you're looking into Mike Menser who's dead or all these other dead people that we look up to. And you're going to base your entire life off of it and you not are, you're not them. You're not them. They made money off of that. You are not making money off that. Don't base your life on that shit. Don't base your life on it. Mike Menser's program was perfect. You, by the, I mean, very soon into the program, you're only working out every 47 days. Leave it at that. You don't need more than that. I trained actually people in the Menzer style when he was really getting popular in 2003. I never seen better results in my life on my on my clients. Never. They couldn't believe how much weight they were lifting. I couldn't believe how fit they were getting. I couldn't believe it. If you are making your entire life about this stuff, stop doing that. Unless it's your livelihood. If it's your livelihood, it's a completely different story. This has kind of become my livelihood. But as you see, this this meat suit, it's not as skinny as I'd like it, but you gotta just live, man. Like you gotta live. You're gonna be 44 <laughs> wondering what the fuck happened. At some point, like I can still I still feel like I'm 18, really. Like going to the gym, lifting, just going to the throwing fish, cutting fish, going to the gym, going home, tired as fuck, maybe hanging out with friends, maybe just going to bed, maybe playing video games. And I'm like, what was it all for? What was it all for? Why was, uh, why did it take over like this? And just let me vent. I don't need advice. This is not, this is actually me giving you advice. If you want it, take it. Cause this whole thing has been so retarded. I know you're not allowed to use that word anymore. Somebody's gonna get offended. I'm sure I've already offended somebody. I'm good at that. <clears throat> but wow. And then the self-sabotage that comes from it is unreal. The self-sabotage that has ha that happened this year with somebody is just, oh, I still pray that that is undoable. Nobody really wants to listen to anybody else's advice. But if you're watching me screaming at the microphone for this this amount of time, and I've had good times. I can't, I can't complain. You know, I've, I've had good times. One of my favorite things to do is make people laugh, and I've done a lot of that. But when I really look back at it, what was I like? And you're scared of it too. Like you're, you know, you're scared of life basically with some of this stuff. It's, it, it turns into this. Yeah. But what if this happens? And I wonder, I wonder if it really is OCD or if it's really cortisol that I've been living on this whole time over a body image, how much better my life quality would have been if I just ate like the rest of my friends, if I had just lived kind of a little more the way I actually wanted to live, right? Instead of being so scared, like, oh, what would they think? What would they think? Don't be so scared to just live life, even if you're overweight, because guess what? You are going to be overweight until you're not. So all those days that you're putting off or hiding in the house or doing whatever you're doing to try to avoid that, it's just kind of like the person, it's, 85 degrees outside and they're wearing a hoodie they're huge it, the hood the hoodie is not hiding the fact that you are severely overweight everyone knows so just live with it 
because you're going to have to until you no longer do. And that is my advice. And this is not, this video is not, do not take this in any way, shape or form that I am one of these uh, body positivity things at all. Because being overweight sucks. It sucks. There's nothing fun about it at all. Let's not sugarcoat this. It's shit. It, it's terrible. But don't avoid the rest of your, and don't put it in everybody else's face. Don't, I mean, don't. Another thing is you're seeing these people wearing these these 900 pound women wearing these like bikinis. No one wants to see it. So don't go to that end either. What I'm saying is you're fat. Or maybe you're not. Maybe you're skinny as shit and you got a body image uh, problem there. Doesn't matter. The only thing that you can take with you from this planet is the memories that you have and the things that you've learned. That's the only thing you own. And if the only thing that you own is staying home because you don't want anybody else to see you or whatever, where does that lead? Where does that lead? Seriously, that just leads to misery. And then you start getting bitter because other people, I mean, I'm actually like the least bitter piece, person you've ever met, but I do see it in other people. Like they're bitter over the shit. Like, why did they get to do that? Like you could do it too, bitch. Like, you know, like, yeah, they're skinnier than you, but you still could do it. You know, like it, it's just, I don't know what this video is. Hopefully this video helped somebody, maybe even me. But when you've got stacks, I throw a lot of this stuff out actually. But when you've got stacks and stacks and stacks of notebooks from your previous life, of your previous lifting life, and yes, I did achieve just about everything I wanted to in the lifting world, but it didn't have to take over my life. I wasn't making money from it. I never made money. Well, I guess I did because I was training people. It's just like when I was married and my wife would come home and she would complain about her job every day, every single day. And I got tired of it. I said, look, so I got it. I got this timer. I, I put the timer on the, the table and I said, you got two minutes. She's like, what? So you got two minutes to complain about your job. That's it. I don't want to hear about it. I've told you to quit. I don't need you to even work I'm making enough money. I'm, we're fine. I don't want to hear about it. Quit or just you got two minutes. It's ridiculous. And it's just the same thing. Like people are so scared to do certain things or whatever because they got X result the last time and they might get it this time, even though they don't know they, you have no idea. I don't know where that one's going. I've been through a lot Need water. A lot of it's been my own self doing, but when somebody said something about the OCD, I really legit think a lot of this stuff has to do with high cortisol and a lot of people who have high cortisol have the exact same symptoms as OCD. I don't know where all of this is going. Hopefully this helped somebody somewhere in some planet continent or whatever this is not a poor me video this is maybe you'll learn from me probably won't probably do it on your you know probably do your own thing come to the realization at some point in your life either way either way don't push life aside because you're obsessed with something it will it would just you'll have notebooks of your previous workouts that you've turned down everything you turn down dating you turn down going to prom actually you turn down going to it just just all sorts of things so you could go for that lift that you don't even remember but you do remember that you didn't go to prom or you didn't go to or you didn't have sex with the girl that was on your bed i mean she like it was like self-serve like who turns this down but <sighs> She's beautiful too. Just live. And I'm not telling everybody, I'm not telling everybody to go have sex with everybody. Cause I don't really believe in that anyway. That's probably, that's part of it too. You know, the Catholic guilt is, hits hard, but this isn't about racking up, you know, of the body count. I, I hate that so much. There is nothing masculine about that at all. Like, oh yeah, I've done a hike 150 women. I, I actually find that to be more of a beta male. Like my optimal, optimal human, optimal. You find a woman, you guys just are committed to each other and you guys work that shit out. You commit to each other, you work that shit out and everybody's gonna come on here, blah, 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 blah. With the one percenters are all gonna come on here about their, their stories, whatever. The top, tier like if we're if we're if we're gonna compare this to video games like s rank is like the top you can get the alpha 
male and female, are the people, and it doesn't matter what the fuck you look like, the alpha, male and female, to me, are two people who don't have a body count, they just get together, they work that shit out, they don't let each other go, no matter what the fuck happens, they don't cheat on each other, they work that life out, that is ultimate, S rank, alpha, as high as it gets. I don't give a fuck about your 150, 200, whatever women. When I interviewed uh, Dan McDonald and he told me he'd been with like a thousand women, I, I'm like, ugh. That does nothing for me. At all. <clears throat> it's just nothing for me. I'm sorry. It's just, ugh. When you can just be with one person and just it's you two versus the world. You don't tell anybody else what's going on with you two. Nobody fucking needs to know. <clears throat> That's it. That is ground zero. That is ultimate. That's it. Any comments, questions? I'm sure I'm not looking for advice. I'm giving out advice. You don't have to take it. That's fine. This is not like Ryan's looking for advice. This is Ryan telling you what he has been through. If it resonates with you, great. If it does not resonate with you, great. I think that's it, man. I just want to talk. This is partly why I don't make videos at night because I rant and rave. But nobody's here. Here we are. Anyway, talk to you in the next one. Peace.